What's up everybody, it's James here from the Sawyer Family Reviews channel bringing you another toy review. It's another Ninja Turtle review. It's the NECA Toys Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Last Ronin Armored Version figure. The Last Ronin is a storyline published by IDW Comics carrying forward a story idea that Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird had put together way back in the early days of Ninja Turtles at Mirage Studios. It presents a future tale where only one turtle has survived. The other three turtles have met their fates, and now it's a story of revenge for this last turtle. As you can see, I'm trying my best to avoid saying who that last turtle is, because I don't want to spoil it for you. It's kind of a big part of the story. Even though it happens early on, it's still a big reveal. Most people probably know by now who it is, but I still don't want to be the guy that spoils it for you if you don't. So anyway... As the story was being published, I kept thinking, like, man, I would love if the company would do a Last Ronin. I just wonder who would do it. Would it be NECA Toys that would have the rights? Would it be Playmates? Would it be Super 7? I believe that Playmates was the first one to reveal their Last Ronin figure, but then hot on the heels of that, I think that NECA revealed their version, their first version. And then they revealed an unarmored version very quickly after, and now we have a whole line. But anyway, so this is the first release from that, that batch. So the Last Ronin is kind of its own thing. They haven't done, I don't think, any IDW comics up to this point. NECA hasn't, other than this guy. We've had Mirage, we've had Archie, and now we've got IDW in the form of Last Ronin. So we've got this Ultimate version, Armored, Last Ronin, that has just been released, and the Playmates version that has also just been released. I'm looking up here because I see the box with that Last Ronin over there. So you've got two different options to choose from, well, two different companies to choose from, plus two different Last Ronins from each company all at once, because you've got this guy and the unarmored version, you've got the black and white, you've got the regular Playmates, a lot of Last Ronin to deal with. Is this guy worth your money? Let's find out. We're going to go take him over and do a review. Let's go do that. As always, let's look at a packaged version of the figure first. This packaging is awesome. I'm, I'm getting a little bit bored in some regards with some of the Ultimates packaging, especially ones where the front panel doesn't expressly tell you what figure you have inside. I'm looking at you, Back to the Future figures. But in the case of this Last Ronin figure, this is awesome. We've got the Last Ronin logo here and this really awesome image by Ben Bishop of the Last Ronin Turtle running forward ready for a fight. Ben Bishop was one of the main artists on the Last Ronin series. So having him do packaging art for this figure is awesome. There's also some art on here by Luis Antonio Delgado, apparently. Um, but you've got some really cool stuff on here. This side panel here, even though it just seems like a standalone image of the Last Ronin Turtle, this will actually be a mural across all of the Ultimate-style boxes of the Last Ronin series. So you can even see a little bit right here of an upcoming figure, which is the, uh, the unarmored, the one with the shirt off of the Last Ronin Turtle. So those two packages join together. And then I'm assuming the mural will continue on through all the flashback turtles and the villains and all that stuff. Really cool idea. It, especially if you keep your boxes, you take your figures out and you keep your boxes, you can line all these up on a shelf behind them and have a really cool image right behind. We've got the last Ronin logo up top. We've got our credits, as we already sort of looked at before, down below. And I'll kind of bring those forward so you can get a good look at all those. Uh, then on the back of the box, we've got three shots of the figure, another artwork image of the Last Ronin Turtle down below, and then a brief write-up, which I'm going to try and get through really quick. I don't think there's any spoilers in it. Again, I'm going to try my best to stay away from spoiling this reveal for you. Who is the Last Ronin? In a future battle ravaged New York City, a lone surviving turtle embarks on a seemingly hopeless mission, seeking justice for the family he lost. From legendary Team and T co-creators Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird, comes the final story of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, three decades in the making. What terrible events destroyed his family and left New York a crumbling post-apocalyptic nightmare? All will be revealed in this climactic turtle's tale that sees longtime friends become enemies and new allies emerging in the most unexpected places. Can the surviving turtle triumph? Then we've got another panel here which has the first cover from the last Ronin series on the side. Open it up. We've got a nice shot of the figure here inside, and then, of course, our figure laid out inside the box. I've already had the figure itself out. I haven't taken out the accessories, but usually he's all bound inside there. Uh, let's get him out of there, and let's talk about the figure. Okay, we've got Last Ronin out of the box. 
Here he is. I'm going to immediately move him out of the way, though, because I want to tackle extra hands and accessories and all that stuff first. So first things first, we've got two extra sets of hands. We've got an open style posed hands and a set of gripping hands. And there's sort of a close up view of them for you. And then here is all the accessories. He is really decked out with accessories. Uh, as you can see, they're all kind of laid out here. I'm just gonna point out each thing with the katana that I couldn't fit on here. So he comes with a katana blade, obviously with three of the brothers dead. This one turtle has all four accessories. So we've got one of Leo's katanas there. This is really nicely sculpted and painted. Really, really cool katana blade. There's a sheath for it, but it's a very tight fit. Like getting this down into that sheath, you kind of really have to force it in. And even then you can only get it into about there and then it's just kind of is resisted and stopped. Uh, so you have that sheath there and then a set of goggles here. The goggles were well painted. They've got that red eye thing that you could see in the comic and then an elastic strap there. And those can either go around his neck or on his head, however you want to pose it. We've got four ninja stars here, a little tiny smoke bomb, the climbing claw with a long string. The string goes all the way there. You can kind of wrap that around his belt. We've got an extra bandana piece. These plug into the back of the head. The head that he has on does not have one because it has the hood, but the extra head, as we'll see in a second, has another one of these that's even longer, and they can be interchanged between both head sculpts, so you can choose which one you want to have when it's not a hooded look. Then we've got a Donnie Bow Staff, a Raphael Psy, We've got a pair of Mikey Chucks, and then this Tonfa, I think is what it's called. I think it's called a Tonfa, or Nightstick, however you want to refer to it. The weapon he uses in there, and he actually uses two of these, but it only includes one. So there is your view of all the accessories he comes with. They're all nicely painted, and like I said, he has quite the arsenal. Look at that design on Raphael's Psy. Like, it's really well done. The tip of mine is a little bent. I just need to put it in some hot water. Uh, the paintwork on the little smoke bomb. Yeah, these are great accessories. And the figure has accessory storage on the figure, which I'm a, I'm a mark for. Um, let's, let's get him back over. I'm going to load him down, and we'll take a look at him. Okay, so here he is, all decked out with as many weapons on him as I could fit. I'm sure there's a way to get this climbing claw kind of wrapped around something on the belt. But I don't want to permanently attach anything or tie anything off right now. So just imagine this climbing claws on there somewhere or wrapped around his arm or something. I put the psi here and then I kind of worked the sheath into this little bracket here. There's two soft circular pieces here. I worked the sheath into that one and then I went up from the bottom on the bow staff because there's not a good way to get that wrapped part in there. It's really a tight fit. So that wrapped part, it's going to be tough to get it through there. And then that shows you how far in the sword can go into the sheath before it gets too much resistance. And even getting it into this point, it felt like there was resistance. And I kind of hung the nunchucks over this hole here. You can actually probably squeeze both of the handles into there if you wanted to. I had them both squeezed into here at one point. I just wouldn't leave anything in there where it's super, super tight over time because who knows if this will split or what. Same with this. I believe it's called either a tonfa with a nightsticky type thing. This was a tight squeeze getting this into this portion here. I actually went again like the bow staff up from the bottom just because trying to angle this piece in with all this here uh, was a little tough. But as you can see, he can store almost all of his weapons on him with the exception of maybe the ninja stars and that climbing claw, which you could probably wrap around somehow. Uh, I'm going to take all this stuff back off of him, though, before we tackle the, the articulation and stuff. I just wanted to show you what it would look like when you have him all decked out. And it is really cool that he's like a walking arsenal. I think that's awesome. Let's get all that off of him. Okay, all that's off of him. I did go ahead and take off the head and put the goggle piece underneath his chin just so you could sh I could show you what he would look like with that look, which is a cool look. You can also, again, put them over his head to have him wear goggles on, but I don't like that as much as I do the exposed look. The other thing he comes with is this extra head. I didn't show this during the accessory part because it kind of needs more highlighting. Uh, he's got this open mouth 
angry expression going on and this very long bandana piece. And all of these bandana pieces just pull out of here. There's a little hole in the back. That's also how you attach the hood. I'm going to pull this hood off. So the hood has one of these little tiny posts in the back, as you can see there. And so you would post in the hood into that little hole instead of the bandana when you're putting the hood on. So it just kind of goes like that. And then you post into that hole to put on the different heads and the hood look. Uh, so this bandana piece, like I showed you, is much longer than the one that's just included as an accessory. It's more flat. And this one has more of a posed, blowing in the wind type of look. But they're interchangeable across both heads. And then I also assume that both heads that are included with the shirtless version will be compatible with all of this stuff, which is cool. So you can have multiple looks of both figures, which I think is pretty awesome. I don't know if... I'm not going to stretch that over his head just to show you what it looks like with it. But let's take a look at his articulation here. So we've got ankles that pivot back and forth. And then they are in a rocker, so they sort of angle as they move. Then we've got a double-jointed knee. This is tight, and it's ratcheting. So the knee pad is the second, or the middle section here. So those can come forward to there. And then we've got that newer style barbell NECA hip joint. So there's not as much fear of breakage inside there where the plastic kind of clings to each other. There's not a ton of movement thanks to the skirt piece. She can get up to about there. It does hinge out a bit, hinges back to there, and then it's got rotation up there as well. But the, the hips are just a little bit limited because of this skirt piece. There's not a whole lot you can do when the, with this design other than making that piece fabric, but then you'd have a real change between the sculpted torso and then a fabric piece down below, and I just wouldn't dig that. Uh, then we've got a ball-jointed torso. We can hinge back to about there. Sque squeechy, squeechy, squeechy. Goes back and forth a bit. We've got rotation at the shoulder. Now, these big elbow or big uh, shoulder pads, though, are going to get in your way. So you'd have to hinge out quite a bit. They'll rotate all the way around. They will rotate around, but you just kind of have to hinge out or you're going to hit on that. The part that I feel like may become a problem over time is this swivel here on this double elbow joint. Because it does swivel around, but you're going to get caught up by this large elbow pad. So if you're pressing against it, it's going to resist against there. And I'm afraid of weakening that elbow swivel at the, at the bicep over time, just because the resistance of all this stuff. So I probably won't pose that joint a lot, just because I don't want it to get it super loose. He does have a double jointed elbow, and he's got rotation right here at the gauntlet piece. So you're not missing a lot if you don't use that swivel a lot. I just, I'm afraid of how much resistance is there and pressing against it. You get like a little bit back and forth, but I wouldn't go much past that uh, before you'd start, I don't know, stretching stuff out. Then we've got rotation at the wrists that hinge in and out. There's not a lot of hinge to them just because he's got such big bulky hands. So you're going to again get resistance between this wrist guard and his hands themselves. And then we've got a ball jointed head. There's not a ton of movement on that either. It's just got a little wiggle up and down. It's got rotation all around. But you're not going to get like crazy looking up poses and crazy looking down and all that stuff. He's going to have the hood on for me anyway. So at that point, I'm not expecting him to be able to look up to the sky or something. The overall design of the figure is really awesome. This matches the look from the comic exactly. It's just a perfect rendition of that design. It's also not overly comic book painted, if that makes any sense. It's not like the um, Mirage Turtles where you've got that those thick black lines going on, or even like the animated turtles where you've got all that cell shading going on. This looks like a more realistic take on that art. There is still a little bit of that line work, like especially on these boot coverings where you can see those black lines that almost look like inked lines. But for the most part, this feels like a more realistic take, almost like a movie turtle version of The Last Ronin. Uh, yeah, man. Sharp, sharp, sharp sculpt. Really well done paint job. Look at all that, like, 
dirty shading on the sh on the shoulder pads. He's got the the freckles, the little freckle marks on the top of his head. Painted toes. Yeah, really solid paintwork. The metallic knee pad there looks like metal. It really does look like metal, like old beaten iron or something. Man, the paintwork on him is really nice. Sculpt works great. Paint works great. Really awesome figure. Let's do some size comparisons really quick here. Uh, first of all, let's bring in the new Playmates Last Ronin, which this gives you a really good idea of how tiny the Playmates Last Ronin is. When I first saw pictures of this figure, and we'll get into this more when I do the review for him, he's going to give me a real problem standing. I was figuring he was going to be the size of like the classic collection turtles, just by the design of the figure, but he's really meant to fit with the old Playmates toys, the old Playmates turtles. So there he is next to him. And then my other last Ronin, which is the DeFoot Toys custom last Ronin, to have all three of my last Ronin guys together in one shot. I still think this one's awesome. This, this to me is more like a classic Playmates last Ronin more than the actual Playmates last Ronin. Even though I like this figure, I really like that custom more. Okay, uh, now let's get into some other size comparisons. Again, I'm not going to say which turtle this is. I'm going to avoid doing that. So don't infer anything from any of these comparisons. So here he is next to a Mirage NECA turtle. As you can see what I'm saying here with all the black lines that have been painted onto him that are not painted onto him. And that, again, could be also the age of this comic versus the age of these comics, where a heavier inking and the black and white and then even the coloring back then Whereas coloring nowadays is all computer coloring and it's more made to look realistic. So it, it kind of could play into that more. Or it could be that they really were trying to make this look like a more realistic, real-life version of the um, Last Ronin. So here he is, speaking of realistic versions, here he is next to a movie turtle from NECA. Other than the head being this size and being more of a... Um, comic booky type look instead of the Jim Henson type look. This is a pretty good match, like size wise, sculpt wise. If this head were one of these heads, it might be dead on. It'd be fun to paint up one of these heads with a black bandana and put it on here and just to see what it looks like and see about a movie version last Ronin. Uh, then we've got here is a Super 7 Turtle to bring that in. It'd be interesting to see Super 7's take on a Last Ronin, even though I'm not sure if they do even have the rights to do that or not. And then last but not least, we'll just bring in a classic Playmates turtle. This is your best fit between these two here. Okay, so sculpt is great. Paint's great. Figure's great. Scale's great. Articulation's really solid. He's loaded with accessories. This is a home run figure. This is one of my favorite figures of the year. Uh, we're coming to the close of 2022 soon, and this guy's definitely in the running for figure of the year for me. He is top-notch, and if you're a Turtle fan, he's a must-have. Read the book, buy this figure. Even if you don't buy the whole line, you could buy just this figure and be super happy with it. He retails for about $38. bucks. i am going to leave a link down below to Entertainment Earth if you'd like to order one. I give it super high recommendation. NECA knocked it out of the park. I'm very excited for this entire line. I'm happy to see that it is a whole line and not just a one-off. I think that's that's a smart move. I wanted to talk about this ring thing here, too. I, I totally forgot. This is really cool because I didn't really understand this when I saw the cover of the comic, this ring formation thing. You know, my lights are going to go out. But they did a good job of capturing this, this ring formation with these actual fabric-y threads going off of it. Really cool. Uh, I'm going to wrap this one up. I'll talk to you guys next time. Subscribe if you want. Like if you want. Leave a comment if you want. Talk to you guys next time. Take it easy. Goodbye.